Happy birthday, Prio Premature Baby Foundation. Happy birthday. I'd like to wish the Prio a wonderful, wonderful birthday and happy birthday to Danny Prio also. You guys have been, a, been an absolute lifeline. Thank you so much. Happy birthday. We were sort of building our careers in, in the UK racing and trying to develop our opportunities out there. My sort of career was just blossoming, starting to blossom when Seb came along. So pretty similar fundraising but for more other racing projects and yeah. of course he was very prem uh, much yeah. more prem than Daniela actually but it's Andy's career did take off luckily so we decided to come back to Guernsey and have Daniela. You've told me about that time when Seb was born like having to leave Sebastian at the hospital and the two of you driving home. Well that was really hard because yeah. well I had a cesarean so there was nowhere I could go backwards and forwards when I wanted mm. so sometimes luckily Andy could drop me off really early in the morning before he went off and did his work yeah. Um, and then we'd have to leave him in the evening and that was hard it was about a 25 minute drive which probably doesn't sound too much but for us in Guernsey it was yeah. and then I'd have to worry about him to the next morning I didn't like doing that I hated it I think it was that. scary you used to come in in the mornings to near an atal unit and you'd see like four or five doctors and nurses over the, around the cot think, what's wrong this morning what's mm-hmm. the next drama and obviously Danny, for Danny's birth you were the one that was very sick but for Seb you know he, he had a real fight on right from the beginning mm-hmm. we were lucky to actually have him really because it was actually all around this neonatal class it was one of your last ones and and that was probably what saved his life in, because in I was really that, reluctant I said yeah. Andy I'm really tired I don't fancy he said no nope, we've got to go the nurse had seen me in the morning and she wasn't that happy with me and then they realised that there was no heartbeat and well there was a heartbeat very, it was very, very high very it was fighting you were really struggling with like she just seemed to out, went yellow it was and blew, blew yeah. up quite a lot and yeah she, they were just worried about the heart rate and of course we delivered him that night, eh, pretty much. And he had the umbilical cord around his neck, it was, really? all, it was all... Is it a couple of years later when you had Daniela? And you said she wasn't as premature, but she was still early. She was, yeah. she was five weeks early actually. Yeah. So I think we found out after Andy was in Macau racing and uh, really irritated, itching everywhere. And I said, Mum, I don't feel right. She told me, stop moaning. She said, you'll be having the baby soon. You know, mm. I was just getting a bit irritated. But then I didn't didn't look well, so she took me up. And, mm. yeah, I had food poisoning, apparently. I had, um, and it was nasty. Hepatitis. And it, it, it nearly took you out. But, um, but that was where I think, I guess, you know, because I was away racing. Mm. In fact, my manager at the time, Tim, is coming over this weekend. He always celebrates Danny's birthday because we were in Macau. Mm. When he when she was born, and obviously right. she was premature, I wasn't expecting a yeah. call like that. We and couldn't wake like, Andy up. We had to find no, Tim, didn't Tim I? Tim came yeah. rushing into my room and said, "Andy, Joe's going in now for the baby." And we waited for what seemed like hours, and then it was really really scary. And then of course we were given the phone call that we had Daniela and that she's yeah. okay, but she was on oxygen. Mm-hmm. Joe was okay, but um, she's got some issues. And then Tim and I both burst into tears. We were overlooking the, the Macau Bridge, and I, I'll never forget that moment looking out the window and, you know, is my wife alive and is my daughter okay? And, you know, at that time I was having a really good run in my career and I was world champion. And Joe was at the end, to be honest, a week of very serious illness. You know, you could have died. They told me that she had the highest numbers they've ever seen of this. Just as, I think just it's called health. Gonna, yeah. Basically, organ failure, the whole lot was going to happen. They saved her really. We had such great care with the neonatal nurses and doctors and all of the people from Seb right through to Daniela. Yeah. We sat on the end of the bed. Well, we've got to do something for these guys. They're amazing. And it was going to be a one-off event at first. <laughs> it was an right? incubator, wasn't it? I think oh, okay. Thinking, a one-off yeah. fundraiser. And is this where you came in then, Richard, as editor? Yeah, yeah, so it was It was just before that the first event that we held. Um, Andy and Joe had said, we're thinking about doing this. And they were really keen to make sure it was done and structured in the right way. Mm-hmm. Transparency was absolutely key, but also making yeah. sure you got the right the right way of doing things. At, at the time, I was about two years into a startup company with a couple of colleagues with my background in governance. I said, look, this is how we should do it. We should set it up as a proper trust, get a trustee in place, get advice from the mm-hmm. advocates and things. And, and that's exactly what we did. Um, so we had that from, from the outset, and we've continued to build on that since, but clearly making sure that if things were run well, but also making sure that accounts were available, transparency was there so mm-hmm. everybody could see if they wanted to, where the funds yeah. were being used, and so on. Hello, this is Alistair and Anna 
from Fairbrush and Farrell. Congratulations to PPBF for 20 amazing years. Thank you very, very much for the service which you provide, which is such a help to families in need. It's been an absolute privilege to help with the Frankie's Den property and here's to PPBF for the next 20 amazing years. Yeah, it's hard to believe it's 20 years later. And, yeah. you know, so it'd be really great if we could do like a little look back or a timeline of everything mm-hmm. that we've achieved in that 20 year period. And can I ask your family situation, children, and have you had any experience of prematurity yourself? Not, not directly, no. Yeah. So I've got two, two children, a little bit older than, than seven Danny's. There were two motivations for my involvement. One was I'd known Andy 30, 35 years. Joe was my cousin. But also from a business perspective, um, in, in starting a new company, part of what we wanted to do is making sure that we're giving back to the community mm. and using our skills. Charities can really benefit from having people who've got skills. And for, for those people who, who have a specific skill set, it's easy. It really is. But for, for charities who sometimes don't have that skill set, it's really difficult to, mm. you know, to do that. And so finding people... So you know, part of what I wanted to do with this and uh, was ha- help um, get the word out there that you know, for other people to get involved in charities, no matter how small, if you've got skills and you've got a bit of time that you can dedicate, it can make a big difference because it allows Joe as the driving force, PPPF, to focus mm. on what she's good yeah. at and promoting the charity and liaising with everybody. Um, meanwhile, some of the other things and the background team we've got now along with Guy and Dave Clark and, and Pete Bose here as well. We've got more hands on deck. Everybody with a very slightly different skill yeah. set, but it allows the charity to function a bit more efficiently. This is Pete Bosier, trustee of the Prio Premature Baby Foundation. Congratulations, guys. This is an amazing achievement to get 20 years of this fantastic charity. You've helped so many Guernsey families over the years. It's incredible to witness firsthand all the work that everyone puts in, especially Joe and Andy for founding this phenomenal Guernsey charity. And here's to the next 20 years, um, maybe a few more flats and definitely helping thousands of Guernsey families in their hour of need. And again, happy birthday. And I look forward to all the celebrations. Of course, the idea snowballed. So you go yeah. from one yeah. one initiative to, oh, we could do something more with this. And then I had an idea in my head. It was funny. It was an idea in my head. Why don't we love a flat in Southampton? Yeah. That would be one of my things because I didn't like leaving Seven. Yeah. Really, and I, and then out of the blue, I had a lovely man and his wife come up to me saying, "We really would like to let you, you know, lease a flat or to." gift you a flat for yeah. so many years um, they've since actually given it to us so I'm so yeah. grateful but and then it started we had a flat so it just carried on I think that was a period of time a few years where you were still doing stuff um, and still generating funds for, yeah. for families and helping them yeah, in their boxes way and, stuff and you were sending boxes and you were also helping them with costs for flights you know of course when you have a prem baby it's unexpected so yeah. um, not everybody can just leave at the drop of a hat, not everybody can afford to live off the island. So Joe helped with, I mean, some of the things that used to really get me were, you know, she'd give them a little SIM card that would work in England, or uh, the baby box idea, which was, you know, The beautiful. printer was another idea we bought, printer. because when I first met Seb, I didn't hold him or anything, he got taken quickly, and I had a photo. In a, it was a Polaroid, of course, then, yeah. 23 years ago, on a card. And I bought that idea to Guernsey for the first few years. I remember, you took it everywhere. All I had was this photo. Yeah. And um, that kept me going. And then the printer was a real big thing for the Guernsey neonatal unit. They loved it. I think we had to buy two in the end because it was so used. Yeah. But now we've got phones and pictures. and. That's it. That's why I love the baby box ideas because yeah. there was, you know, there was some perfume in there, some, some, some mm-hmm. nice shampoo, the SIM card. The um, the baby easy. clothes and the nappies, the yeah. bottles, the bottles. You know, it's almost like they need that, that, and people still kept those boxes, haven't they? And Becky wearing little yeah. um, the ornaments present, and stuff, a little yeah. bear, just little things like that. And yeah. we've had so much comeback on those, which I think you know they'll keep the box as well for when they're mm-hmm. older, put all their bits and pieces in. Yeah. Um, and also, what's lovely is Rich's mum, bless her. You know, used to oh, knit for us. Still got some. My mum uh, knitted knits for us and. Friends in England, you know, all yeah. knit, and you just get stuff coming around at home. A little bag of clothes, a little baby grows, yeah. and all the little socks, and 
and like little hats. I remember Seb, <laughs> he used to have a little um, Guernsey flag, like my racing helmet, but a little hat yeah. knitted with my racing helmet. And it must have been tiny. It's yeah, when you see... The size of a pigeon when you put him on your hand yeah. like that, little, little guy. There must be so many success stories, which, as we said, we're going to hear from some of the families that have been supported. But are there any moments, or were there any moments in those early days where you thought, actually, we've, we're, we've got something here and it is yeah. going to grow? The early days were really about buy, you know, buying lots of kit for the for the hospital. Yeah. Much needed equipment yeah. that mm-hmm. either needed replacing or a new kit that they ne- yeah. needed, wasn't it? So, and then after a while, you know, the ambition was there about getting our own our yeah. own place for families to stay, and that's when you really think, yeah, we're going somewhere. Going place, somewhere. Yeah. I did say, he bump into a lady. Bless her, she's not here anymore. Uh, forgive me, I forget her name, but she came up to me and said to me, how many years has your charity been running? Mm. I said, we're about five or six. Well, she said, if you cha- I always knew that if a charity doesn't run until after, th- well, three years was the maximum, so she says, you're well on your way. And yeah. that's why I thought, yeah, we're getting somewhere. Yeah. Thank you for looking after us when Jack was born and being amazing ever since. Lots of love. From Jack. John. And Dawn Seeley. Lots of love on your special anniversary. Amanda. Luke and Umi. Mm. We want to say thank you for all of your help throughout the years and for all the families that you have helped. Lots of love. Vicky, Wayne, Troy Lepedra. Thank you. It's quite amazing how much drive Jo has for the charity and, and it's, her, it's clearly her life mission. Mm. You yeah. know what I mean? Because it goes, she goes beyond the norm mm. and we all know. I mean, Rich has come to our meetings for 20 years. We've all, we've all got our own busy lives and we're all tired but we still get, you know, do what we've got to do. But Joe is the one that does it every day, yeah. um, and uh, that is very, very high energy because um, there's always somebody that needs something. Yeah. You know, whether it's Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. I've seen her on the phone. New Year's Eve. We were away this weekend. She was on the phone all weekend, and it's just constant. Yeah. It never stops. It's got harder now with the phones because people can get you much easier. It has got a lot busier, I yeah. will say, to be honest. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older, but I think it's because you can contact people just like that, a WhatsApp yeah. or a phone. Well, as you were saying, the difference in technology from yeah. people trying to contact you when you were away, when Daniela was Couldn't born, get you, yeah. to the photos yeah. when Seb was born and, yeah. and all yeah. the rest of it. But even the medical technology has changed so much, so the prognosis for some of these very premature babies yeah. will be much improved. True. There's still that feeling for the parents. Again, I've said, yeah. I can't imagine what it would be like do you still feel that drive then when someone, Just when you hear all oh, the babies? Yeah, well, usually the dads are calling me now actually, right. there's a lot more we should do about dads, but again that's another story, but yeah. they're usually the ones that contact me and they, they you know, their heads are everywhere, they don't know what yeah. they're doing and how they're going to help and they feel really, you know, sometimes they can't do their work because the, they have to leave their job and they haven't got any money, it's quite scary now and um, I do feel, this, every time I speak to a family it takes me right back to when Seb was born. Um, yeah. I just want to help because well, we didn't have, it's scary, it really is. When Seb was born, I didn't have a drive, I had no money. I was borrowing cars, do you remember? Yeah. To get to the hospital. And um, shoes. In fact, and shoes, <laughs> buying second shoes. shoes with my friends at Silverstone because I just didn't have any income. And so yeah. we were. We know what that felt like, eh? to, to not have any anything yeah. but have all of this sudden problem. You know, you've got your little house and that's warm, but then suddenly you're outside of that and that's money. Getting there is not easy and all that stuff. So. And the father only wants to be with the mother really at the end of the day. They want to be with a new child. So I feel for them. So I do seem to be helping. And when a bit you're, soft. <laughs> yeah, but when you're in that situation as the parents, you must be thinking that the baby might not yeah. survive. Yeah. Nothing else counts, does it? No. Nothing. And you know. we've heard some stories as late, you know, some babies have been born that they're really going through a, a lot. Yeah. And I feel for that. And, you know, I'm, I'm so pleased that Seb... In the end, there was nothing wrong with him. It took a while for him to grow to a... In the first year, he didn't grow like a normal baby, so he was quite tiny for a long time, but, you know, he's perfect. A little fighter. You know, he's a little fighter. But, yeah, the other thing that, you know, a lot of the stuff now is also dealing with families um, that have got cancer, yeah. you know, children. Yes. And one of the mission statements I think, Rich, we put together was what we wanted to do was lessen the suffering in times of need for families, whether that's help, being close to the hospital... All of these things, um, which statements, mission statements that we, all of us, brainstormed right from the beginning, 20 years ago, still very, very Strongly. prevalent today. Yeah, we stick to that all the time. Well, we've we've become more and more ambitious as time has gone by. So yes. you start off by an incubator, then it's a flat, then it's, you know, then it's two flats. Yeah, and, then it's then it, and then it becomes um, you know, 
something that hopefully will have a legacy that will survive beyond all of us and continue mm. for a long time in the future and that's really what we want and that's part yeah. of what we've done by bringing other people on you know, to be involved in things. Have you got any key moments then from those early years, so there was the incubator and the first flat, any key moments that really stand out for you? Personally for me success? one of the first ones was the brain monitor and because the kids used to have to get flown away if they, because mm -hmm. you could never, with a prem baby, you can't see if they're fitting. So right. they, if they were that prem, they needed to send them to the UK. So we bought the brain monitor, which meant that they could check whether they were, their brain frequencies wow. or whatever were correct. Yeah. So that stopped, that actually kept the families in Guernsey, which was a great, that was a pretty that good one. That was pretty, pretty good, that was, yeah. They, yeah, yeah they, that was one big milestone there. But things do change. I mean, I think now they, they can keep them up to about 36 weeks or something, so, or 32. I think I'm, I'm going to send them away. But, yeah, that, that was a big... But then yeah. the monitor's changed now. They want something new now because that's like 17 years ago, yeah. I think, and but it's a new monitor they've bought out now. So, actually, we're just fundraising for one now, to be honest. Um, we're doing that with the Ivy Trust because it will help full-term babies and prem babies, so we're doing that at the moment. Hi, Shelley and Erin here from the Ivy Trust Guernsey. We would like to wish the PPBF an enormous congratulations on your 20th anniversary. What an extraordinary achievement. Thank you for all the vital work that you do in supporting families when they need it most. We can't wait to work with you in 2024. All our love and best wishes. I think, first of all, we were focused on buying equipment, you know, ventilators, monitors, hot pots. And then, of course, um, I think the whole... One of the big things was, um, I don't know if we're allowed to mention any names, but yeah. somebody donated a flat um, to, to help, which Joe mentioned before. Um, and I think then that started the whole Buy a Brick campaign, yeah. which was, that brought all of the local people in to then realise that these kids and families are being flown away. But to have a property right opposite the hospital, mm. like within walking distance of a two minute walk, you can see the main entrance. That connected Guernsey with Southampton, yeah. and I think that was a fundamental. That really one. brought the charity's work into spotlight with the public here, yeah. and, and because of that, the support then grew. Yeah, I would say personally, one of my proudest moments for the charity is, is um, being awarded the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service. Yeah. So that was um, nice. That's the MBE for, for the voluntary yeah. sector, and that was fantastic. It was achievement, was... but of course that helped the profile for the charity, and it. Yeah. and contributed to even further mm. success because I think the following year, so that, that was in 2015 and 2016, we, we had an award from the Guernsey Community Foundation as a, as a fundraising team, yeah. um, which it, again all, all helps doesn't it, you know, because yeah. the, the, char the charity is in the spotlight, more and more the public are aware of what you're doing um, and because of that it does help. It does make it a little bit easier when you come in to, to raise funds. But there's been a couple of really great campaigns, haven't yeah. there? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the Buy a Brick campaign there. When did you launch that one? Because that was, that was about 2000 successful, wasn't it, in terms of... 15, campaign. along with Investec. So they were very good. They've, we did a three-year plan with them, which was great. But they Buy a Brick campaign. So they gave us so much a year, and we went out and did our media. They also helped with the marketing costs. They did. Mm. You're doing events, you keep the profile up, if you're helping families, but... Doing events is also a big drain of time and resources. Yeah. You know, you need helpers. So you, we were very conscious that we didn't want to become an event company, but we needed help from the exposure perspective. Yeah. So that was a really big one for me. Um, well, it was great to have all the names yeah. up on the walls and the yeah. Yeah. flats and things. That's and special. That is, yeah. so, we yeah. raised two hundred and seventy thousand in that campaign. Yeah. That yeah. was really brilliant. Actually. And when you walk into the flat with everybody's name on the wall. Mm -hmm every brick that was bought by a local person, it, it is very emotional. It is very, uh, yeah. you do, you, you well up every time you walk in, I do yeah. anyway. Yeah. It's quite amazing really. And those, fa one of the things, having Richard and a really good business team, what we want to do is leave that, those flats there as a legacy mm -hmm. for ever, you know yeah. what I mean, for families. So obviously we've just got to make sure there's a structure in place and keep all of these things rolling, you know. Yeah. We had our daughter at 32 weeks, born in Portsmouth. We put us in contact with another mum when we were completely alone and didn't know anything over there. Um, you then supported us a year later when my daughter needed medical care in Southampton Hospital for six weeks and we stayed in Aggiesboro. It was an absolute lifeline and you've provided us support all this time. I'm Alexis Morgan and I'm a Prio Premature Baby Foundation Ambassador. 
But before that, my first experience with the charity was in October 2019, when our daughter Zara was born 16 weeks early and our family called the very perfect Aggies Borough in Southampton our home for three months. I've experienced it firsthand and I think it's incredible how Joe and Andy have taken that really vulnerable experience of being parents to premature babies and turned it into this incredible charity that's helped so many families when they need it most. Genuinely, having the flat was the one thing I didn't have to worry about in those really hard days. And now, another heartfelt thanks for asking me to be part of your incredible ambassador team. I'm so proud and so looking forward to the next 20 years of supporting Guernsey families when they need it the most. What we wanted to do was have a team of, of ambassadors with different backgrounds, you know, different um, social and business connections, different networks and things. Um, to help promote the, the, the activities of the charity, but also to give more support to yeah. the trustees because it can't just fall at that time, it's three or four people and we've now got more trustees, but you know, that's, Joe's already doing an awful lot, but, you know, and we had Ali, Ali Lee who for a number of years, who was amazing, and we've got a couple of guys now, uh, Sammy and mm-hmm. uh, Steffi are, are great, but we need more hands uh, and to have 10 dedicated ambassadors, plus we've got two honorary ambassadors, and you can guess who those two are. <laughs> um, but at the same time, uh, I, I approached the Deputy Mayor, Jessica Rowland, to, to see if she would become patron of the charity, and mm-hmm. we were absolutely thrilled to bits when yeah. she decided to, yeah. to become involved. This is Jessica Rowland, Deputy Bailiff and patron of the brilliant Prio Premature Baby Foundation, having the opportunity to wish a very happy birthday and to celebrate all the wonderful things you've done over 20 years of supporting families with premature babies and sick children is an absolute privilege. Happy, happy birthday. She's been great, great, actually. actually. She really has. Yeah. Yeah. So Um, that's really good, but part of that was a longer term view, mm -hmm. you know, that there are more people to help spread the word and carry on the good work of, you know, that that, that Joe and the rest of the team have done, so. Yeah, and it's tricky now running a charity. It's not, you know, you're not spending your money, you're spending Guernsey's money. Um, so, you know, the transparency is crucial and the due diligence and all of the corporate compliance and everything else that's, that's come into our lives has just got much more onerous. So those jobs, you know, they they, Time they detract from raising money, but you need to have them. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a very big charity with a very small overhead compared to a lot of the other charities in Guernsey who probably have quadruple people so I think we're trying to keep it lean and mean but as being as big as possible um, with the amount that it does but it, it is tricky so yeah. having guys it's hard like to get volunteers as well I don't think people have got time like they used to I don't feel they have anyway not like I just got busy it's just got too busy again I think it's all technology they're texting and yeah people can get hold of people so much quicker and just haven't got time I mean in terms of as you said the charity then and the support I know you get loads of support but you are a very small team but in terms of awareness and branding, you must be up there with the local charities. You know, big the big boys, right. you know, people know We're doing well what with the BBF yeah. is, yeah. the Buy Brick campaign again, and the, the Owl. The Buy Night one, yeah, yeah. the Buy Night, yeah. yeah. I mean, some of your branding is so recognisable. How big a part has that? does that play now compared to when you first started? Huge, I would say. Well, we were lucky yeah. to have a, a guy working for us that changed us, really. He's not with us anymore. He, he's in the background, but mm. he doesn't really probably want to be mentioned, but his name was Stephanie Bright, and he was brilliant. Yeah. He brought out all the the, the, the very emotion. cuddly toys and the motion. He got us straight away, yeah. and he yeah. was fab. We can't thank him enough. He was yeah. brilliant. But we, we've, we've, we've maintained, since he passed it over, it's only recently, but we've still I've seen yeah. our latest advertising stuff, and it looks job. great. Um, so he sort of built the brand, I would say, with yeah. Joe and Rich's help and all of us with our inputs. You know, it's quite nice because when we all get together, it's really creative. Mm-hmm. We've just got to be careful. We don't go on for hours and actually do this <laughs> important stuff, which is... Um, Good point you mentioned because there can be this um, misconception that maybe the charity is actually bigger than it really is. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it's fantastic when you hit a milestone like being able to buy a property and that's all the exciting stuff, but... But the bit that we're charged with is making sure the charity's got enough funds. Hi, I'm Fiona Murray, a PPBF ambassador and event consultant. Standout memories for me were in 2013, the 10th anniversary motorsport themed party with a live link from David Coulthard. The amazing A Right Royal Affair party in 2016 with our VIP visiting lookalikes, Her Majesty the Queen and Charles and Camilla. And also the fun Our House Ska themed party at Castle Cornet in 2017. 
More recently, it has been great seeing our very popular Blingo event become a firm fixture on the local event calendar, raising very important funds for this amazing charity. It's all part of that sort of marketing momentum that we've generated through BioBrick, which is creative yeah. in itself and, mm-hmm. and engage people. But we were like, how can we just say we want, we need some money to run these things, you know, so buying a night, you can actually put bed on a, you can put heads on beds by just buying a night for 60 quid. Yeah. You can keep a family in that flat, you know. Yeah, yeah. For the well, obviously, people have yeah. only got so much money. Yeah, it's a competitive sector being a, a charity. You know, you're, you've got to keep the profile yeah, up there yeah. reminding people what it's all about. Yeah. We never okay. turn anyone away. We like, you know, we never know what, we always want to help. Um, that must be so difficult because, like you, you said, human nature, isn't it, to yeah. help? You know, you can't just say no, sorry, if, you, if there's a flat available, it's open. Why would you turn a family away? You I know, often so. sometimes pay for accommodation maybe at a hotel nearby. Um, when the flats are full? When the flats are full, yeah. When you said the flats out. were, all three of them were full? On, on last Friday, yeah. yeah, for about four days. We've got one. I don't think they ever really go empty, mm. do they? Not when we only had one, it was constant in and yeah. uh, A little bit more juggling now, but... Our man on the ground in um, Dean, he's fantastic. I mean, again, he's been with us probably about 13 years for sure since Mm. the first one. And he's always there for me. He'll change it just like that within hours. So if one family's out, he'll get another family in. He'll meet them there. So we're so lucky to have him. How many families do you think you have supported or are supporting? Or is there a a number? That's a good question. With that, I said there's been 952 babies born. They don't all go off island, but the flats... And those oh. are just the babies, not the children. That's prem babies in there. Yeah. babies, yeah, that's not yeah. as quick Plus to be all of the other. I, I would say being more ambitious, uh, thousands of people in Guernsey yeah. have been influenced or benefited from it, either directly or indirectly. It's in, countless, isn't it's, it? It's, 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 yeah. You don't go a day without someone asking yeah. or thanking you. So I've sweet. had some amazing moments at Guernsey Airport where you land and you're waiting for your luggage and you get a tap on the shoulder and say... This little lad wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. Oh, wow. Oh, don't. Um, you know, and those sort of moments have, been, have blown me away. Remember the difference you have made in so many people's lives. An achievement to be proud of. Happy birthday from all of us at Channel Lines Adjusters. And there has been some terribly sad stories, yeah, which we all, we all pay the price for emotionally as well. Yeah, yeah. those um, are hard. Hence, one of the names of our flats, Aggie's Borough. It's nice that we can keep... Aggie's name alive and uh, yeah. families in the future will benefit from what she had to go through. Yeah. You know, and that generated what, mm. you know, what, it, what there is today with, with a flat for the local families. So. so it's quite emotional. You get some up and down days where you feel for all these yeah. families and, you know, we all stick together. And So, I mean, there's nearly a thousand premature babies yeah. have been helped and obviously parents, siblings, grandparents around them. So yeah. thousands of children and their associated families. Do we have a figure for how much has been raised then over the 20 years? Yeah, I think we're definitely over 1.2, 1.3 million. And is that including the flats? Well, we yeah. some Are flats. you being a bit too modest here, Joe? I is think she will be. Actually, you're the money man. She is being modest then. Yeah. I, I would say so, for yeah. sure. Because the, the, the flats uh, have a legacy, so they've got value that's going to be held. Yeah. If you include those, you're probably closer to your two million. So. I think and so. And what we like to do is always make sure the money that we get donated gets spent. And that was something your father told me when we set the charity up. It's important that people see their donated money and that they're seeing it being spent. So that's been with me right from the start. Yeah. We yeah, we, we've got it. a buffer because you need it because you're running flats and people are in it. But, um, you know, the, the charity does, mm. these financial guys, they, they really put, put everyone under pressure to spend the money in the right areas, have it accountable, yeah. that the decisions money. are being made co- correctly before anything's signed off. It goes around the table. Um, and I think one of the nice things, which is something we always wanted, was the charity has total transparency. We're not spending our money, we're spending the Guernsey's money. Yeah. How much does it cost to run the flats? Around? We're working out it's about 15,000 each flat a year. But sometimes you can have a more expensive year. Like I think we're thinking of redecorating a couple of the flats. Mm-hmm. How much is it a night to buy it? By a night. It's sixty pound yeah. per night. Off right. If I could, knew I could cover the flats, I wouldn't have to worry every night. We've had really good um, support from corporates. They buy months, which are great. We can have a great one-off campaign to buy something, but we've got to run this stuff. So having mm. people buy nights, yeah, um, yeah. You know, it's great, and it's it's a nice way of either remembering somebody, or it's a birthday or yeah. anniversary, or um, sometimes, can... unfortunately, it's a memorial type. But but actually, what a great way, you know, what a good idea yeah. to do yeah. for. 
for Christmas presents. I was just thinking example, that. Yeah. Do people yeah. buy a night? And oh, people's you know, names. Christmas yeah. is coming up. Well, they did days. last year, yeah. actually. Yeah. They did do that last year. They do. So, of course, if you look on the calendar on the on our website, you can get a date that you like and put someone's name. But you can have a look now and click on it, and you can see who's bought it. Some people are anonymous, but yeah. a lot of yeah. people say, to my son who was born this day, which is lovely. Yeah. So, as well, some of the things I'm, I want to just say are the people who've literally sweated blood and tears to raise money, like... Simon <laughs> Johns, who rode yeah. for 24 hours. And yes, this is Pete epic. Pete Bosey and his epic the team who rode for people that have Jumping done, out of aircraft. Uh, jumping and out. All sorts, yeah, yeah, there's been some real yeah. heroes. Running you know? deserts. But, but it's, the, it's the range of things, isn't it? It's not just the, the massive things. It, yeah. you know, it's people doing Boxing fish, and fishing things. events, small, yeah. Yeah, small yeah. Uh, but it's a yeah. big thing for, for those guys. It'll be a bingo night. Or a, you know, yeah. yeah. There's so many, it's hard to yeah. give everybody credit, isn't it? The Day Salon would like to congratulate the Priya Premature Baby Foundation on reaching their platinum year. We love working with such an amazing team of people who work so hard to raise the much-needed funds for their charity. Hi, I'm Laura Cornelius, Head of HR at the International Stock Exchange. Tyus has partnered with the Priya Premature Baby Foundation this year as our 2023 charity of choice. We are so pleased to be partnered with this fantastic charity and supporting the incredible work that they do. It's yeah. great what people do. You know, yeah. like you mentioned earlier, we've got an army of knitters. Yeah. You know, yeah. And yeah. Actually, do you want to say about the, the clothing that we sort of... We've just it? had triplets born in Guernsey, three little girls just giving nappies and whatever. But I said to her, would she be interested in pre-love clothes? And she would. We're going to put a basket or bucket outside and one day a week, anyone who's got pram baby clothes, drop, drop them in there and we're going to do pre-love boxes and yeah. just to keep them going because there's not a lot out there. I the mean, challenges don't go away when you've got yeah. a pram baby... They're always struggling for something. The height, the this, the that, mm. the academic. Then it's this. It's constant. But they do get to... It does yeah. come and then you learn to be a fighter. And that's a really good quality to have. So I think, you know, it's it not is. easy for the families. So it's been 20 years since the charity was launched. What's next? And my goal is to build something that can be used beyond our lifetime. Obviously, we can't all continue to go forever. Yeah. So we need to find new people to come in and help and keep raising the money you know to keep keep the flats going keep give you know the, the uh, scuba unit op- options to have equipment help families with ch- sick children babies are going to continue to be born yeah. and people are going to continue to be ill so you know we want to help charity we, don't continue, yeah. but, we yeah. should really thank all our supporters because we've got many that have come along over the years, you've got like Becky Rowe. You've got we've had a lot of good support for the Blingo events. Which yeah. yeah, Catherine was at Catherine's Catherine been part, of that, part of that. But DWA, the, all and the corporate supporters that yeah. come to that year after yeah. year. We could be here for yeah. an hour and a half, yeah. and we might forget one person yeah. we don't mean to. Exactly. But corporates to local people to very wealthy businessmen, mm. whatever, or in, left money in the trust for the charity after they passed, you know. Mm-hmm. So it'd be sad, it'd be really sad to us to mention exactly. and miss yeah. anyone because they're Maybe all amazing. We're well, well, so well, grateful for everybody's support. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, no matter support. how big or small, but yeah. it all counts, doesn't it? Say again. <laughs> Happy 20th birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Prio Premature Baby Foundation.